Let us begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. May I sing our intro hymn or our first song, How Great Thou Art. What a great hymn to start our worship off this morning. Let us now pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Now come to the time where we confess our sins before God. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now pray the glory together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our prayer for today. Let us pray. Ever-living God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another to follow in the way of his commandments and to share his risen life. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On, I'd like to hand over to Lorraine for the children's address, please. Yo. yo. <laughs> Stop! Look, we're here now! 
What are you doing? They're fighting over lollies. Put them down. What are you doing? We've been reading this morning, haven't we, about Jesus's way, the truth and the life. Do you remember we were reading? And here's our boys and girls say, good morning. Morning. What's the matter? You can't have lollies for breakfast. That's not good, is it? What's the matter? She hit you. You're not friends. No. Is that Jesus's way? Is that what we read about this morning? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, is it? Oh dear, what are we gonna do, boys and girls? They've fallen out. What shall we do? What does Jesus's way say? Can you remember? Do you wanna have another read? Look, look, Jesus's way, truth, and the life. So what do we have to do? We have to say, sorry. Can you say sorry? You hit your brother, Zeke. Can you say sorry? Say sorry. Can you forgive your sister, Zeke? And you can be friends. Oh, that's the way, yeah? That's the way when we fall out, yeah? That we say sorry and we forgive each other because then we have a better life because now they're all friends again. Aren't they? And we don't have lollies for breakfast, do we? Yeah, they're just a treat. Okay. Yeah. And what else is Jesus' way of treating the life? It's reading his word in the Bible. Show the boys and girls your Bible. Look. Yeah. So we, Abby and Zeke, read the word in here together. And what else do we do? We dance like we were doing before. And also, if you go on uh, the Family Tidings page, you will find more videos and you'll find more worship songs that you can all share with your family and you can dance together and read together and listen to more stories about Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And we can't get enough of that, can we? Because hey? we have better lives that way. And what else do we do? Something that you really love to do. You like to pray, don't you? Yeah. Shall we pray? Because we need help to follow Jesus' way, yeah? We can't do it by ourselves, can we? Can we? No. We need his help. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes, put our hands together, bow our heads. Loving God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us the way, your way, the truth, and the life. Thank you for this wonderful life that we get to have with you. Help us to follow you. In the mighty name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. What is it? You've got something. What? what? Oh. What's this? <gasps> Thank you. It's Mother's Day, don't forget. And Abby and Zeke want to say happy Mother's Day to all you mummies out there. Have a fantastic day. Bye. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> we'll now sing our gradual song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Oh, we can. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Oh, here we go. Um, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not, do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you on this special day in our calendar our mother's day and i'm really glad that abby and zeke were able to forgive each other and um and say sorry because they're the things especially in these times when we're not out and about and we sometimes do get in everyone else's way we have to be quick to say sorry and quick to forgive and abby and zeke i'd just like to tell you an old jewish proverb that god couldn't be everywhere and so that's why god created mothers our gospel today uh, starts off with do not let your hearts be troubled that's pretty good advice in these trying times Jesus is saying, you can trust my father and you can trust me. It's a bit like a mother or father giving a frightened or upset child a hug and saying, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. I guess that's one of the most important job of parents, reassuring us that everything is going to be okay. Historically, it has probably fallen more to mothers than fathers to be the nurturer and carer. But in more recent years, dads have also been right at the forefront of care and nurture, shaking off the distantness and aloofness of past centuries. And that is what Jesus is saying to us in the gospel. We're receiving a verbal hug from Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit too. We know that the Holy Spirit is also called the Comforter. And I remember a friend of mine telling me when she was in a terrible accident in which her husband died, she was lying there in the tangled wreckage and she sort of felt and heard a voice saying to her, don't worry you will be all right. The comforter was right there with her. So as we listen to Jesus' words in today's gospel, the care and love and concern of God comes through strongly. God, the Trinity, is just like our parents comforting us. And I think on this Mother's Day, we realize something very special about God. Parents in their loving and caring for their children give us a beautiful picture of God, 
a beautiful image and likeness. For many of us, those words image and likeness take us back to the book of Genesis and God creating humankind. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. We could say, so God created us in his image. In the image of God, he created us. Male and female, he created us. Because we understand that God is God, God is not human. God is not male or female. God is God. God is the completeness and the unity of the Trinity. God is perfection and certainly God is perfect love. Nothing else in creation is such a wonderful image of God. Not even the most perfect sunrise. Not even the most beautiful rainbow. Not even the amazing images that Hubble, who's up there sort of going around and around in circles above our earth, taking beautiful photos of, of, the, uh, of the universe. None of these uh, come in any way close to the beautiful image and likeness we have that God created us male and female in his image. God is present to us in many ways. We know we are temples of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says he is present in the least of our brothers and sisters. But scripture teaches us that we can see God's image most clearly in the love and shared union of male and female in the beauty and familiarity of marriage, in the closeness of couples who have shared years and years of togetherness, in the love of parents, of fathers and mothers. There are many male images of God in the Bible, and surprisingly, there are many female images of God as well. In the Old Testament, the spirit or wisdom, as the spirit is known, is always spoken of in the feminine. The Hebrew word for spirit, ruach, is nearly all cases feminine. And the first Christians, of course, all of them were Jews, ru the, took this over because the Aramaic word for spirit, rucha is also feminine. Other examples in Hosea, it says, God says, yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I who took them up in my arms, but they did not know I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. Hosea also surprisingly describes God as a mother bear. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I will attack them and tear them asunder. A bit violent for today. Deuteronomy describes God as a mother eagle, like the eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young. God's wings, God spreads wings to catch you and carry you on pinions. Deuteronomy continues, God who gives birth. You were unmindful of the rock that bore you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. Isaiah has a lovely image of God as a comforting mother. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Isaiah presents, also presents God as a woman in labor. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept myself still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. 
some Psalm 131 speaks beautifully of God as a mother. But I have calmed and quietened my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. Another Psalm, Psalm 123. As the eyes of a servant look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to you, Yahweh, until you show us mercy. And of course, we're all familiar with Matthew and Luke giving us a story when Jesus compared God as a mother hen. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Through Jesus, God invites us into the unity of the Godhead. This could not happen if we weren't somehow similar to God. If we didn't carry the divine spark, if God hadn't breathed into us and given us life, if we weren't created in God's image and likeness. God clearly presents himself as God the Father in the Bible, not as God the Mother. However, focusing on God's also motherly traits and motherly actions, as, as repeatedly displayed in scripture, is biblical. And understanding all the characteristics of God can be of great comfort to those who may have difficulty relating to God as Father. We know that's happened in many domestic violence situations. Blessedly, God also says, I am the Lord, your healer. So as we draw near to God, he can heal the hurts that cause our discomfort in relating to him. And he can enable us to know him as he really is. This morning, I would like to finish with two more reflections or points. Firstly, thank you to our mothers and also to all those who've carried on a motherly role, maybe not mothers themselves, but lots of other people out there who don't have their children, but have still done lots of mothering in their lives. So thank you to all mothers whose care and compassion whose sacrifice and service, whose gift of life and nurture, along with loving fathers, have given us a glimpse of the image and likeness of the compassionate and loving God. And of course, they, they also share the frustration and sadness and tragedy that God feels when their children turn away from love and away from life. Secondly and finally, I would ask you to pray with me this wonderful prayer, which reminds us that there are many human images of God, but that even all of these images taken together, they fall short of the beauty and splendor and mystery of the Godhead. So please say with me, O oh God, because you are the source of all life and love and being, we call you creator. Because we know the history of your presence among your covenanted people and honor their tradition, we call you Lord. Because our savior, Jesus Christ, your obedient child, knew you intimately and spoke of you so, we call you Father. Because you are present in each act of birth and because you shelter, nurture and care for us, we call you Mother. Because you hold us up and give us strength and courage when we are weak and in need, 
we call you sustainer. Because we have known you in our pain and suffering, we call you comforter. Because beyond pain lies your promise of all things made new, we call you hope. Because you are the means of liberation and the way to freedom, we call you deliverer. Because you have chosen to come among us and share our common lot, making the hard choices, suffering and dying. Because you rose victorious, bringing new life, we call you redeemer. Confident that you will hear, we call upon you with all the names that make you real to us. The names which create an image in our minds and hearts, an image which our souls can understand and touch. And yet we know that you are more than all of these. Blessing and power, glory and honour be unto you, our God. Amen. Let us now together affirm the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the world and for the church. Today's prayers will be read by me, but they were prepared by Mayan Quayle. So a big thank you to Mayan for today's prayers. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to pray for your church and for all your people. We join with other Christian churches as we give heartfelt thanks for the mostly peaceful life in Australia. We pray for your intercession in those parts of the world that have been decimated by violence and terrorism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for your guidance in our parish as the coronavirus appears to be receding. We pray that you will continue to protect us and all Australians through the influence our Prime Minister is bringing to bear on the National Committee, which he chairs. We give you thanks for the inspiration provided by medical advisors to our governments. And we thank you for the efforts of politicians who have put aside party politics to work together constructively in the best interests of all Australians. We do understand that some people may have found it difficult to deal with social isolation, we earnestly pray that you will inspire all of us to accept what is obviously in the best interests of our whole community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your guidance to reduce violent attacks in our streets, and we also pray for your guidance to reduce domestic violence among families and friends around Australia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks that we are still able to participate in church services conducted with the aid of things like Zoom, enabling us to continue with an integral part of our Christian faith and our Christian lifestyle, even in the face of the corona pandemic. Many have grown, found great comfort in participating at a distance while being an integral part of these services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father God, we pray you will comfort those who are ill. Please relieve their pain and ease troubled minds. Please comfort the loved ones of those who are ill and guide medical staff. It's particularly significant to offer those heartfelt prayers, Lord God, at the moment when many people are living in isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This time of social isolation, we also pray for the lonely and destitute, for the isolated and the frail, and for those who are disabled. We uplift them before you, Heavenly Father, and pray that you will bless them with the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we also think of those among our church family and, and in their own families who are not well at this time. We pray particularly for those on our prayer list, particularly Nev Gardner at this time as he recovers from surgery. We pray for others that we hold in our hearts. Heavenly Father, you are the great healer. We pray that you will bless those who are ill and bring them peace and comfort. Please keep us safe from the coronavirus and, and guide researchers to find that cure, that vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the rain we have received here in our region, Southeast Queensland, and for the beautiful green growth we see around us as we walk through the Redlands. It lifts our hearts to see such beauty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we give thanks for the lives of those who have gone before us, those that live in paradise with you. We praise you for the blessing we enjoyed in sharing their lives and pray that we will in turn dwell in heaven with you when you call us to your side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what you've asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Share God's peace with each other. We now come to the great thanksgiving. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful that we may praise you not only on our lips, but in our lives, serving you in holiness and righteousness, righteousness all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we're unable to meet physically today, let us now partake in the act of spiritual communion. And what a great celebration it's going to be when we can come together again in the not too distant future, I pray. But let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart 
as though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Most glorious Lord of life, we thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may witness to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. We now sing our missional song, that one that sends us out into the world in which God loves one day at a time. The God of peace, who born again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, with the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, work in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.